Okay, so part of this week we are going to concentrate on the Old Kingdom now. And what I want to do is focus today on a worker's village near the Great Pyramid called Hait el Garab. Um, and here is our timeline. It's the same timeline I showed you before, but now we've moved down to the Old Kingdom. Um, and the Fourth Dynasty in particular, so I've given you the dates here. I've also off to, the, off to the left given you three sources that I used to put this together and I think they're really good papers and I have attached them in our Blackboard class for you to read. Um, first of all, we need to think just a little bit about the pyramids. Now I will be coming back to the pyramids in a, in a uh, probably the next lecture for this class, but why were they built? Um, maybe religious power because of course, you know, they're built to house the body of the Pharaoh and then worship him in his afterlife. Um, and of course, speaking of the Pharaoh, you always have to talk about political power and why these things are built to sort of glorify the, uh, the Pharaoh. And of course, that all leads back to religious power. And I give you here another website, which I passed out to the class before with quite a bit of information about um, these type of subjects. Okay, so let's get down to the, the workers area. Now let me bring up my pen here. So what you're looking at are the, um, these major pyramids. And then it's this area here, which is where the workers village is um, found. Now, this is an overview and it's thought that possibly this workers village is a port city. So, or a port to transport all these materials that were um, used to build the pyramids. And so what you've got here are some heights of the river levels um, above sea level, and you can see how they vary. And then you can see the land levels uh, surrounding this. So anyway, this will just give you a bit of a um, viewpoint of where we're, we're sitting with this. Um, now I know this is kind of small, but go ahead and look at the article. And I've given you the page number where this image is taken from. So this is the overview of the workers site. And as I put here, possibly a port village, and I will go into some of the details of this particular worker's village in, in the next slide. So here's just a close up of what's called the galleries. And so you can see gallery one here, gallery two here, gallery three, and gallery four. And it's thought that these might be areas where the workers were sleeping. Now these workers are building the pyramid. It's not all of them because it took a whole lot more than 1600 people to build the pyramid. Um, but it's thought that in each gallery, you've got maybe 40 to 50 people who are sleeping in these, in these areas. Um, and then as we look around, I'll show you these. So in the east, west, and south, it contains the food producing areas. Um, I do want to mention too that when the archaeologists were working in these areas, at the back of these galleries, what they ended up finding was a bunch of ash pits um, and animal bones and so on. So it looks like the workers were actually cooking in some of these areas. And then here's just a shot, just moving a little further south. So here's gallery four, just to, so you can get your footing here. Um, this area here is called RAB or the Royal Administration Building. And I wanted to put this here because if you have that many people, 1600 people, they have to eat. Um, and so what we find, what the archeologists have find is a, a bunch of silos. And of course these silos would be, would be um, created to hold grain. So, and they also found grinding stones in what's called the Eastern town, which is here, sorry, the arrow is sort of sitting on top of that. Um, so you've got grain, grain storage, and then a place to actually make things like bread and uh, more than likely beer for these people. Uh, you also have the Western town. So just to place yourself, here's the RAB, the Royal Administration Building. And then in the West, you've got these fairly large houses, um, house one, two, and three. And if you look at the article, you can see this a little more clearly, which is, which is a house um, and which is not. Now, these houses are pretty interesting for archeology span because when they looked um, in these houses, they were finding cattle bones, um, they found a leopard tooth, uh, possibly leopard skins, they found hippopotamus bones and so on. And so it's possible that this is where the administrators of this town lived. And then the workers would be housed in uh, the galleries and of course, here's what we just talked about 
where you've got a lot of the grain um, being milled and probably baked. So when the archaeologists went through and discovered this, and this is probably a 30-year um, discovery that's been worked on continuously, they found large numbers of animal bones here. So people were clearly eating large amounts of meat. So I've listed here cattle, sheep, goats, pigs. No big surprise, there's also fish bones because the Nile is right there. Now what's also interesting is that people were also hunting a little. So they found things like gazelle bones and hippopotamus bones and the tusks from hippopotamus. Um, what's really interesting is that they found the very first um, evidence of olives. So again, this is the first time they found evidence of this in ancient Egypt at this time. And again, we're talking about the Old Kingdom. Um, a little bit more information. So when you look at the surrounding pyramids, there are marks on a lot of the stones that the workers put on. And these marks belong to gangs or phyle, P-H-Y-L-E, um, gangs of people who are doing the work. And it's thought that maybe these gangs of um, highly skilled workers, because they were working in stone, uh, lived in this village. And so you've got crews who are doing the work, you've got specialists who are actually carving the stones or uh, shaping the stones. It's also possible that foreign workers lived here because remember I told you it was a port city. So you've got the Nile coming in very close. There, the, all this stuff was brought in by ship and some of it was from outside of Egypt. So it's thought maybe the foreign workers lived in this town and if you look at the, the articles that I've given, uh, it's possible that Nubians lived here. Nubians lived in the s south of Egypt or what's called the Asiatics, which is everyone outside of uh, Egypt, especially in the north. Now, you really have to start thinking about sustainability and what all of this means in terms of the topic for our class. So what we really have here is something called the bureaucratic state. And I give, I've given you a, a quote here by Barry Kemp in his book called Ancient Egypt, Anatomy of a Civilization on page 111. So I'll just read it, but you can stop the video and read it yourself. Um, the material achievement, achievements of ancient states, pyramids, conspicuous wealth, palaces, temples, conquests, all depended on a particular skill. And that was the administration of resources. And so you had to have a massive bureaucratic state to build something like a pyramid. Um, and what I've got here is some of the accounting um, measures that the Egypt, ancient Egyptians used. So what you're looking at is not necessarily from this village, but this is coming from a temple complex or something like a mortuary complex. So the buildings that are attached to the pyramids. And what you can see is it gives the name of who it's going to, uh, where the deliveries, what the del deliveries are, where it's coming from, and then the type of bread and so on. So they kept track of a lot of different things. And then also in these um, documents, in fact, the documents called the Abyssir uh, Papyri, um, they also kept track of things that needed to be fixed or things that were broken. So if you stop the video and look through here, you can see that some of these, these bowls that they list here are chipped um, and so on. So they really kept track of a lot of really much everything. And then there's this idea of rationing, which is the way that the Egyptian state would pay its workers. And this would include people working on the, um, the building the pyramids, taking care of the pyramids, taking care of the mortuary complexes and so on. And as Barry Kemp calls it, it's the heart of the economic system. So scribes kept track of everything produced and everything used. Now, when you're talking about grain, so people ate bread and the, the initial grain was measured when it was grown. So what they used is something called a hecat. And that's about almost five liters of grain, so a little more than a gallon of grain. And what they did was they measured the grain before it was threshed, they, me they measured it after it was threshed, they measured it before it got put on a ship, they measured it when it was taken off the ship, and then they calculated how much storage needed to be used. And I'm not gonna go through the math because I don't think I can actually go through the math with you on this, but this is um, taken from one of the papyri and how they calculated out how much grain would fit into a silo. And then again, here's some more about rationing. So you're making, or you're keep, they're keeping track of grain that's um, used to feed um, the workers or the people who are building the pyramids or taking care of the mortuary complexes. So what they've done is they've started to measure 
how much was grown, how much was stored, and now what they need to do is convert that into bread and beer, if we're talking about grain. And then, so the outcome of all of this is a loaf of bread or a jug of beer. And so what they started to do is calculate how much people would eat. And so a laborer would get 10 loaves, 10 loaves, 10 loaves of bread, and then up to two jugs of beer, depending on um, uh, what this laborer was actually doing. And it really depended on the actual work. So if someone was doing heavy labor, they actually got more food and more drink. Um, I should say, I'm gonna do a lecture on a loaf of bread and a jug of beer next week, but I will tell you that the way they made beer is they made the bread first and put it over like a slat or a linen cloth and then poured water over it. And the liquid was kept in a jar and then that would ferment slightly and that would be the beer. And so now other people, higher up the chain, like the social social hierarchy, would get more. And so this is a little um, papyri telling you about how to distribute 100 loaves if you have 10 men. And then it talks about if you've got different people. So the skipper, the crew leader, and the door, their doorkeeper would, would get double what a normal person would, would have. And so this is the formula on what they do to distribute that bread. So the ancient Egyptians were pretty amazing in terms of math and in terms of counting to take care of all of this. Now, of course, I also had to keep track of labor. Um, that was not only human effort, but they measured and kept track of everything. So like, as I put here, brick, straw, earth, rubble, sand, how much they needed. So the volume would be calculated. And then what they do is they calculate how much one person could move in a day and they transfer that back to how much food that person would need and therefore how much grain you would have to bring in and store. And then everything would be calculated. It's a pretty amazing system for an ancient, ancient society. Okay, so what can this workers town tell us about sustainability? Well, first it's a state sponsored project. So we're talking about um, the highly evolved method of keeping track of agriculture, which of course is based on the economy. So you have to think of how many animals were brought in, how many animals had to be raised and brought in and then killed and cooked to feed 1600 people. Now remember, that's just a fraction of what was needed to build these pyramids, but this is what we have from this particular town. How much grain needed to be kept? Now to think about grain, you think about the Nile, of course, and you think about the flooding and how you know a larger flood might give you more land to farm. Um, if you get weaker floods, that might um, impact how much grain you actually grow, which could impact the way that you have to calculate all of this. And then they had to figure out how much bread and how much beer would need to be made to feed and um, uh, have these people drink something. And then of course, on top of all this is the government. So the government needed to oversee all of this. Um, and of course the scribes were part of the government and these mortuary temple complexes were part of the government. And of course, like a worker's village is certainly part of the government. All this had to be overseen. And of course, all this is based on agriculture. Now, one thing I'm not going to talk about is, and we don't quite know the answer to this, but thousands and thousands of people were needed to build these pyramids. So where did they stay? Um, how much did they eat and so on? If you make a guess, because we don't know the exact number, then you can start calculating how much food was actually needed and how it's pretty clear that the environment had a massive impact on building a structure like this, like these, the, worker, the worker village sites and of course the pyramids.